In this tutorial, we'll simplify the process of adding a DBoss effect to a cylinder. Keyboard shortcuts appear in the bottom left corner. First, we'll follow the first rule of Fusion, create a new component. As in most cases, we'll draw the design from a two-dimensional sketch on the horizontal construction plane. Start a center diameter circle at the origin to keep the sketch centered on the canvas. Once the sketch is ready, save time by jumping straight into the extrude command without closing the sketch environment. Change the extrude type to thin extrude to remove the solid infill. Adjust the cylinder's thickness using the wall thickness setting, then confirm with Enter or by clicking OK. Here's where my workflow differs from most tutorials I've seen on YouTube. Feel free to share your thoughts on the pros and cons of this approach in the comments below. Instead of spending time creating an offset or tangent plane, I place the center point slot directly next to the cylinder, using the predefined construction plane already centralized on the canvas. Rather than angling the sketch, I keep it aligned straight with the cylinder for simplicity. Use the emboss command with the deboss effect to create the engraved feature. Switch the effect type by either clicking the symbol or entering a negative value in the depth setting. Then use the rotation angle setting to add the angle detail. This workflow makes it easy to fine-tune the angle and instantly see the result. For appearances, I'll use the search bar to quickly find and apply a metal finish. Make sure your settings are set to bodies components if you want the appearance applied to the entire cylinder. Once that's done, I'll save the project and start an in-canvas render, switching the quality from excellent to final. You can access the scene settings quickly via the right-click menu. Since rendering iterations are fast, it's easy to experiment and find an image you like. The rendering settings, including the appearances I used for this video's YouTube thumbnail, are actually different from the ones I tested while recording. If you start an in-canvas render, you can let it continue longer by switching the quality from excellent to final in the bottom right corner. I recommend checking out my tutorial on modeling a twisted vase in Fusion if you are interested in learning how to create a complex model with simple inputs. If you haven't already, consider subscribing so I can keep delivering fast-paced, high-quality content to you regularly. See you in the next video.